G is the purchase of the Ballotar ballot printing system. We have Ms. Cox with us this morning. How are you doing? Great, sir. Good. I'm really here to answer questions. You have a package in front of you. It's from existing funds, and it will save us a ton of money, not to mention time and stress. So what can I answer? Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> yes. Um, it looks like 2012 you printed 40,900 ballots. That was the total order for 2012, all the elections combined. But you only we've only used 2,208 of them? Correct. We have to order enough to plan for the two-week turnaround. We never know exactly who's going to need them, how many we're going to need, how many we need to send to a precinct. Uh, what we cannot do is run out on election day or before election day. So we're required to order more to make sure we don't run out. With the ballotar system, all of that will be eliminated. We can print a ballot in a minute. That's the largest savings, not having to print those extra ballots and pay shipping costs. Okay, what happens if the ballotar system goes out? They can have it replaced within 24 hours. <clears throat> That's not going to do you any good on election day, though. On election day, we'll have our ballots printed already. So are you going to print 2,200 ballots, or are you going to print more than that? The number of ballots we print is dependent on the election, the expected turnout, how many people we think will need them. But when we order them from a printer, we have to order them in lots of 50. Mm -hmm. So if we have seven voters in one ballot style, we still have to order 50 and send them out to the precincts. In this case, if we have seven voters, we can print five and send them out to the precincts as opposed to that 50. So we'll be printing a whole lot less. I still have a hard time understanding why we printed 40,900 ballots and only used 2,200. Well, we have multiple elections. We have the, uh, the primary and the general election and generally the runoff for both of those, so that's four elections. Right, I understand. I just, there just seems to be a huge gap between what we actually printed and what we actually used. Well, a primary has basically three ballots for each expected person to do that. You have a nonpartisan, a Republican, and a Democratic ballot. Right. So that triples the number in even number of years. Generally, it's not that many in other elections like the general election. But even in the 13, or the fiscal year 14, the 13 printing from December of 13 and, and May of 14, we printed 28,000 ballots and it looks like we used 2,900 of them. The number of ballots you print is dependent on the expected turnout, and you have to have a bunch extra in case people need them. Anyone that wants to vote a paper ballot can in the precinct or in our office. Anyone that requests one by mail can get one, and anyone that walks in and wants to vote and is not immediately found on the rolls gets to vote a paper ballot. Right. And you have to supply those in all the precincts, and we have nine of those. So we have to make sure we have enough ballots no matter where people come into the precincts and not run out. We can't run to the copier and make copies of them. Right. Uh, it's a disaster at state level if you run out of ballots. It's actually actionable if you run out of ballots. So, Ms. Cox, your savings that, that we're looking at here is based on the fact that you will not be printing the 40,000 ballots. You'll be able to provide a closer number of, of approximately of the ballots that you actually feel like that you'll need because you'll be able to print much sooner rather than wait for the printer to print and deliver the ballots. That's correct. Plus, on Election Day, we can just send a few out to each precinct. If we need more, we can have those printed and delivered in a heartbeat. It's real quick. The other saving is shipping. You can see we spent $5,000 or so on shipping. Uh, we eliminate all of that. We eliminate the two-week wait time. Uh, it's a good deal all the way around. And, and, of course, I understand the commissioner's concerns. I mean, we're sitting here looking at uh, printing 40,000, 41,000 ballots and, and just utilizing 2,900 or thereabout of the ballots, there should be, it looks like, some some sort of history that's that's been developed that just says, listen, you really don't need 40,000 ballots. You need this much, and then you would add some, a small percentage to it to be able to be covered. It looks like we've spent a lot of money in the past that we really didn't have to spend, simply because we were calling ourselves printing all these ballots because we might need them. But I, I couldn't imagine that we need 40,000 ballots. But. The primary years is what drives those numbers up. Uh, we generally look at 5% of the expected, well, 5% of the population that's going to vote. Okay. Um, when you hit a primary year, 
that jumps up to three times that amount because you don't know which ballot they're going to choose. So right. that's what drives that number up. Right. Well, I understand all that, and, and I'm, I'm with you there, and we're looking for a way that we can save some money. We're also concerned about the fact that, as much as anything, is that apparently, you know, in, 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 your, in, in your case of trying to be cautious that you do have the ballots, just seems like it's been a tremendous amount of overkill in the past. And now we're looking at a new process that you're coming forward with that you feel like is going to be able to save this money now. Correct. Is this new technology that's come out or is this something that we've had access to in the past? This has been here for the last couple of years. I'm reluctant to jump on something new until I see how it performs in other counties first. Okay. Uh, I don't want to waste our money buying a system that we really can't use. <clears throat> and we thank you for that. But it's got a tremendous track record. And then I anticipate saving about $10,000 in 2016 alone for elections okay. with the Ballotar system. Okay. Any other questions? Is this a reoccurring cost every year or is this a one-time fee? The, uh, it's a five-year contract. We pay the cost every year, uh, and then we have a chance to renew it five years. It's a five-year lease. Okay. Quick question. How many people, I mean, do you anticipate uh, voting this year? I know it's a municipal year, or what have you, and, and ballots and all, but how many do you anticipate? There's a lot of variables that go into <coughs> anticipating turnout. Um, generally, 2016 right now is driving the interest in 2015, so we're planning for a 50% turnout. We don't know if that will occur or not, um, but we have to hedge our bets and be prepared for everybody to turn out, knowing that they don't. Uh, but we have to be prepared for that. But that doesn't mean we have to print all those ballots anymore if we have ballots. Ms. Cox, will you be able then to, uh, to demonstrate the actual savings if we move forward with this request? the actual savings that we are going to be able to generate so that we can justify the additional expenditures on the lease as it moves forward each year? I'm not you're, sure you're, I understand the question. You're saying that you're going to be able to save X amount of dollars? Yes. To, if you do this. Are you going to be able to document that and show us that you're going to be able, to, that those are the actual numbers that you're going to be able to save? Absolutely. Okay. So we can look at that information on next year's budget as we propose Absolutely. our budgets and move and follow. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming. Thanks.